we are glad to know that you're still there, still the run up, and uh, we did promise you that uh, we're going to bring you Mr. Achike Chude, who will be telling us about a stakeholder summit that is being or has been held in Abuja. It ended yesterday, and we want to have some takeouts from that uh, summit. Uh, Mr. Chude, welcome to the run up this uh, today. It's a pleasure. Okay, just tell us about, uh, let's begin with that. Tell us about what the, the Stakeholder Summit was about uh, so that we get a feel of it and then know how to proceed from there. Well, I think essentially it's about continuous engagement with the polity. Uh, it's about, um, you know, civil society's um, contribution uh, to the electoral process in this country and to the proposal, for the proposal of a good governance. And uh, of course, you know that uh, civil society has been heavily involved uh, in the democratic process from 1999 until date. Mm -hmm. uh, they have invested so much time, energy, effort uh, in trying to ensure that uh, we put in place processes that will make uh, elections uh, more or less seamless and they're credible, free and fair and accountable. And so uh, the, the stakeholders meeting put together by the um, uh, by the Nigeria Civil Society uh, Situation Room, uh, of course, uh, with some uh, major contribution by development partners, uh, was uh, just that to ensure that uh, we, you know, uh, push, you know, the frontiers and that we continue, you know, to work, uh, you know, to ensure, you know, a better, pro you know, electoral process. And if you look at uh, the main people who participated in terms of uh, the invited guests, apart from members of Civil Society Situation Room that came from all over the country, you know, and the uh, friends of situation room, different civil society organizations, uh, the man in the eye of the storm, uh, that is uh, the man with the most contentious uh, or most difficult job today in Nigeria, beyond the job of the president and governors, that is the INEC chairman himself, was there. Uh, then uh, we had a representative of the Inspector General of Police, and then uh, the a representative of uh, Intraparty Advisory Council, IPAC. So you have political parties uh, who are primary, normally who are stakeholders in the electoral process. You have uh, security. Of course, you know that the Nigerian Sec uh, Police is the lead uh, security agency in elections in the country. Others are just there to uh, give a helping hand to support them. And then, of course, you have uh, the INEC. Uh, itself that is uh, responsible for conducting elections. So uh, the, it was a good representation. And then the essence was to look at uh, what has happened, you know, what is happening and what is likely going to happen with regards to the election in 2023, and to look at the uh, possible gray areas, uh, if any, and to give advice to the INEC chairman uh, so that some of these things uh, that are changeable can be changed. And some of these, I mean, the uh, proposals can be reflected uh, in the way, you know, election is being conducted. INEC, I think, has always acknowledged the role of civil society uh, in helping them to navigate the murky waters of Nigerian politics, especially during the electoral period. You know, and so I think the INEC chairman was grateful uh, for the opportunity to come before the people and to also uh, give uh, Nigerians an idea of uh, what INEC has done, what it's doing, and what it is going to do. Uh, in the weeks and the months to come, uh, so to ensure a proper you know, electoral process. Okay, the, the, you just mentioned what was, what is, and what is likely to come, um, and the capacity of the CSOs to advise INEC and all that. So what did you take from what was, and what have you taken from what is, in order for you to advise INEC uh, about what is likely to come? What are the strongest points well, that you have well, taken from the past? Yeah, well, well, what was what was in this instance is the fact is the feeling that um, you know that uh, progress has been made in our electoral process from 1999 to date. I mean, especially with regards to the rules and activities of uh, INEC. And so I think there was that general acceptance that we have made some progress. Mm. Of course, uh, there are so many you know there are some areas that still need to be fine tuned, uh, but the, the general feeling that. Um, Instead of a feeling of despair and despondency, there's a feeling of hope, uh, you know, that um, we have not done too badly. That is in terms of uh, the electoral umpire and the response of uh, the Nigerian citizens and civil society organizations. But I'm not exactly sure that uh, that feeling of optimism 
you know, uh, uh, you know that we can also attribute that uh, feeling of optimism also to the behavior and performances of the political class. I still maintain that uh, the weakest link in Nigeria's, uh, you know, uh, political evolution is the political class. They have not shown any serious sense of responsibility. They have, they have, they are unpatriotic and they are not nationalistic in by any stretch of the imagination. And we look for any possibility, you know, any loophole that they can find to undermine the electoral process for their own gain. You know, so it's a very selfish, you know, and a corrupt political class. And that is why the country is where it is. So we have INEC on one hand that is trying to do well. Uh, you know, we have the civil society organizations that are also trying to push INEC uh, to the part of a credible elections. Then we have the politicians that are trying to undermine INEC and the efforts of civil society organizations over the years. You know, so that is, I think, where we are now. Then, but obviously, uh, we we the other things we are looking at. Uh, you know, I don't know whether to preempt you, but obviously, in terms of where we are, the INEC chairman also had some worries about uh, the and one of the two major worries that he you know talked about. Uh, one is uh, the issue of um, security. He said that security still remains, still constitutes a problem, a worrying you know development uh, for. Uh, INEC uh, with regards to elections in the country and just and felt that um, it is a duty, the responsibility of everybody, you know, the security forces, civil society organizations, the media, and Nigerians in general, you know, to ensure that uh, we can have a, a, a more conducive environment uh, for the conduct of elections in the country. That is his first worry. I think the second one also had to do with uh, uh, his worry over the the issue of a uh, campaign financing in clear violation of uh, you know electoral law uh, of obviously there are caps uh, that have been you know that have become part of the law in terms of uh, capping uh, the uh, you know monies that go into campaigns and other political activities and obviously unfortunately that has been observed in the bridge because you now see stupendous obscene amounts of money being spent by candidates across board by political parties and that, that is something that is worrisome to INEC and then the INEC chairman you know says that part of the solution would be to synergize more with uh, civil society organizations and the other groups that are very good at uh, tracking campaign financing uh, so that um, you know uh, one can monitor uh, the extent of compliance or non-compliance with uh, the law on campaign financing then he also talked about um, uh, uh, the PVC, no, no, of course, the PVC collection. He acknowledged the fact that there were delays, about that um, uh, he was giving assurances that very soon that the INEC will reach out to Nigerians uh, to give them uh, details and information about uh, the processes uh, for the collection of uh, uh, cards, you know, uh, you know, by voters. Uh, then, then the last one, I think, if I remember correctly, he was also talking about the means of identification for party agents. And there was no happy about a situation where party agents are not complying with the directive by INEC with regards to you know identification. So he says that INEC is uh, preparing, you know, a very specialized cards, you know, that make it uh, difficult for uh, political parties to subvert, you know, or circumvent uh, the process of identification. And you know, sometimes they 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 also change. Uh, agents, you know, midway while the electoral, you know, process is on. So he's hoping for the cooperation. I found on, called on the IPAC representative, uh, you know, to uh, look in that direction. And the man did say, uh, did say that um, that they have had issues with um, other political parties that many of them have not uh, been in compliance, but that they will keep on doing their best to ensure that uh, the right thing is done with regards to identification, you know, at uh, the you know polling uh, units. Though he also said that is the IPAC man that uh, the two major political parties, the PDP and and APC, uh, are co you know are, are corporate uh, when it comes to uh, issues of uh, attending meetings. Of a uh, you know by the inter you know uh, uh, party inter party um, you know um, organization that is uh, by, by the parties belonging to the IPAC that uh, they have shown some level of arrogance and disdain you know for other political parties because perhaps they feel that uh, that they are uh, far bigger and do not need any kind of advice from the smaller political parties. 
l let me let me come in here. You've mentioned how, how you know how you've mentioned a lot of things about the collection of the uh, PVCs and all, because you can feel the anxiety in the air with Nigerians. No, I can hear you. Can you. I can hear you. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me, Mr. Chude? Okay. Can you hear us now? I don't know why he can't hear. Okay. Can you hear us now? Okay, please uh, speak up. Let's see. All right. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Okay, I think uh, there's a bit it's, of a complication with the not, not connection. Great. Oh, well, you can hear faintly at least, right? Okay, Mr. Chude is um, missing something. You know, when he mentioned stuff about collection of the PVCs and all, you know, because you can feel the anxiety. Mm -hmm. Like people are uh, at that point where they don't want to miss the opportunity, especially people who are really interested, mm -hmm. you know, in participating fully in the forthcoming elections. But then I wanted to ask him, the INEC has been very bold, you know, when they say things about the measures they've put out about vote buying, you know, how to curb it. I wanted to know, you know, during the summit, if this was mentioned and if there was anything different that was said about it and, you know, what the measures would be, because... If we're going to say the truth, you know, as real Nigerians that we are, you will see that you would know that vote buying comes in different ways and measures. Yeah. Even, even the way that you least expect it. I mean, these people are very smart about it. I would, I, I would really, you know, have wanted to hear. If you ask me, what, I, I what think the, even vote buying has begun, but in a subtle way, like you said, yeah. ways that people will not even suspect this vote buying has. So it would have really been lovely if he had lent his voice there, telling us if INEC chairman made pronouncements, how they are going to deal with these people and the rest of the I don't know why. Or prevent it, at least, before it gets to that point. Well, prevention would be difficult. <laughs> <laughs> I think when he was mentioning it, he mentioned it particularly that on the day of election. So mm -hmm. maybe before the elections, nothing much will be done. They I just think, want to I think he, the I think uh, Chude is, is back. Can you hear us now, Mr. Chike Chude? Yes, I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. Okay. Okay. So, uh, before we had that interruption, I was going to ask you about, you know, how that the INEC has, you know, promised to roll out measures to tackle vote buying at the polling units on election day in 2023, and you know, can INEC track the spending of politicians during the campaign period? It's not. It's not the responsibility of INEC, you know, to to sort out the issue of vote buying. I, I think if it was also one of the things that uh, the uh, I mean, chairman talked about when he was talking about campaign financing. I forgot to also mention, you know, that aspect. He was exceedingly very worried about that. But don't also forget that, uh, you know, I make his, and that's why the, the I mean, chairman also talked about uh, the special uh, offenses uh, commission that will be set up to try elector, electoral related offenses. And he was really looking forward. Uh, to that because he talked about uh, the burden that INEC has, you know, has to bear as so many responsibilities and there was, was happy that it was on and there was hoping that it will be passed soon by the National Assembly and so that uh, a different body will be solely responsible for, uh, you know, actions uh, that are in, in during the electoral process that are incompatible with electoral law. Uh, and, and so, um, uh, 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 so obviously, uh, that's why the police were there. That's why uh, they were also invited for the event yesterday. INEC is limited in its uh, uh, in whatever it, it, you know it can do in terms of uh, stopping a vote vote by. Yes, I mean INEC is not an arresting agency. It is not a prosecuting agency. That is the responsibility of the security forces. You have the DSS, you have the police, and other security agencies. So when they see a contravention of uh, the electoral act, especially with regards to vote, vote buying in this instance, and then they have a duty to respond and to arrest people that are engaging in them, I mean, in that act. And I think it was put straight to the INEC uh, by, by, by the convener of uh, the uh, Nigeria Civil Society Situation Rule. It was put straight, that question, observation was put straight to the police, where she also indicated that, that sometimes when this vote buying is goes on openly, you know, uh, before, I mean, in the presence of uh, police officers or security forces, and they do nothing about it. And then the issue of those that have been arrested in past elections, 
you know, and she asked what has happened to those people. So uh, it is something, obviously, INEC has indicated that they want to try to resolve, but it is not the resolution of the issue of vote buying goes far deeper than that are most involved other segments of the Nigerian society, including the security, the people themselves, the political parties. All of them must come together to say, look, this is a very shameful uh, you know, situation and that we need to put a stop to it. Uh, I don't know. Is, did a question ever arise uh, in, the, in the course of this? I don't know, because you're talking security now. I don't know, by way of definition, maybe I would have asked whether vote buying is a security issue that only the police has to do. But what INEC is advocating for a different body to be in charge of this thing, is it not just going to be a kind of uh, duplication of uh, these things? Like some people till now in Nigeria cannot understand why there will be EFCC and ICPC at the same time. What they do differently mm. that made them two bodies. Why not just expand INEC and give it more departments that can take care of uh, various needs of the commission instead of getting a, an entirely different body? Well, well, well the issue of the EFCC and ICPC is a different discussion for another day. But obviously, uh, the issue of uh, the electoral you know, offenses uh, uh, tribunal or commission is not an advocacy of INEC. It has never been. If you remember, if you go back to, to the past, under the PDP uh, dispensation, uh, when uh, the late uh, Umaru Musaya Radua came to power, as a president of Nigeria, he acknowledged that the election that brought him to power was not exactly stellar, uh, you know, and that he left much to be desired and he was going to do something about electoral reform. He set up the Wise Commission and that came up and recommended the breakup of INEC, some of the, you know, uh, to have other, you know, uh, activities that are being performed by INEC, to have them be performed by other, um, other you know, organizations. Uh, obviously, he was taking a cue from what is happening in other parts of the world, especially Africa, South Africa, uh, you know, where the Electoral Commission there is not as burdened as that of INEC. And it has not just been, it was not, and, and, and that the recommendation by the WISE panel was as a result of advocacy by the Nigerian people, civil society organizations, you know, by the media, uh, you know, to, uh, uh, to, re to relieve INEC of uh, the kind of burden that INEC has had to bear. So I do not think it's a duplication uh, in any sort. I, I, I think that that is the right thing to do. Uh, let INEC face the responsibility of conducting elections so that where INEC defaults, we will, we will be ready to call them out and to, take, to, to, to hold them accountable for failures of the electoral process. All right. Uh, just very recently, there's been a court order that came up, you know, asking INEC to resume continuous voter registration uh, until 90 days to the election. How do you react to this, you know, court order? And what do you have to say about well, it? Well, 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 yeah, well, I, I don't know where the court order came from, but obviously there are two contending orders. One is uh, reflects what you just said now, uh, that uh, asked INEC to continue with the review of uh, voters' uh, you know, register, while the other one is the exact opposite, that uh, the court declined uh, to, to ask, uh, it, you know, for INEC uh, to continue uh, with the voters' registration. From that, this, this uh, uh, for the statement of the court, it says that, look, it's even, uh, you know, too late because INEC doesn't even have the time anymore to do that. So let's just say that it's a contentious, uh, you know, court ruling, and nobody knows exactly what the ruling of the court uh, is. Since both of the, the rulings that... Uh, uh, the media has carried, uh, you know, is uh, diametrically opposed to one another. But obviously, even if it's a genuine ruling by the courts, it is something that uh, will be applicable not now, but perhaps in future elections. So I make we have to take note. But first of all, you need to identify, you know, you need to confirm the genuine, the genuineness of uh, the ruling, and then know which of these two, you know, is actually the ruling. If it is one that favors. Uh, the continuation of a uh, registration exercise till 90 days before the, uh, you know, uh, conduct of election, then obviously it's not something that will happen now because we are already there. You know, we are already there. So there is nothing to be gained by, by that uh, court ruling, by INEC trying to do anything in that direction. Well, um, there could have been so many to, uh, questions to ask you, but just like in 30 seconds, if you may, because the time is off, um, from the discussions you had in Abuja, from everything INEC said and the civil societies also said and suggestions you brought, um, 
what is your projection for 2023? How confident are you of the process leading up to 2023 and the outcome thereafter? Well, well the, the road, the, the path of the election in 2023 is true with some difficulties, obviously. And the difficulties uh, stemming from uh, the actions or inactions of uh, uh, the political elites that I have already described as irresponsible and uncommitted, unpatriotic. So they are the ones that try to undermine the process for political gain. And so our duty, our responsibility, not just civil society, you people, you guys, they have a responsibility too. And that is to also monitor the situation and to call out errant politicians, you know, and uh, their misbehavior. Um, and we need to be watchful. We need to be very, very watchful because 2023 is a very pivotal year and we just also need to get it right and hope that uh, the right choice is made by the Nigerian people so that we can begin to move away from a country where all, virtually all the citizens are running away to one that prospers that some of us will be proud of. Okay, Mr. Chude, it's been an honor having you on the show today. I would like to thank you so much for joining us. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. You wrote. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so every time we talk to people, it mm. comes back to the press as well. Something must, must like Nigerians would say, must gum <laughs> us. <laughs> we don't gum the press. Uh, but I, I think, yeah. While they are right that we have a humongous duty uh, to the general public, everybody should also know that uh, not everybody listens to radio or watches television and all that. So whatever corner you find yourself, advocacy should be carried out mm -hmm. and so, so that we don't tread blames. You, the media has to do this. Political parties have to do this. INEC has to do this and all that. We have to know that. It's a Nigerian project, and the Nigerian project is our project. Mm -hmm. If you want it, even if you run away from this uh, country, you will still have relations that once in a while you will talk to, and you want them to be all right when I, you call home. I wouldn't want to see it as throwing blames, because when you look at it, if really, truly, like in your words, it is a Nigerian project, then mm -hmm. it means everybody has a role yeah. to play. And I feel like if everybody plays their role, then things would would you know literally uh, work out uh, properly uh, and then if you want to say that not everybody listens to the radio or watches tv there is somebody whose responsibility is to give orientation mm -hmm. to to you know um, make sure that that the right amount of publicity that is required is given and it is that person's responsibility to bring these informations to radio to tv and take it to hinterland to and every other places that it is required i'm not calling anybody's name <laughs> but you know yourselves and i feel like um, there, there hasn't been enough orientation going on, mm -hmm. you know, for yeah. you know, in the build up to the 2023 general elections. Yeah. So I am hoping that one day we'll get to have a conversation with the NOA guys, mm -hmm. and they probably tell us what they are doing towards the 2023. Because to me, they seem very quiet. And you see, that is also even a problem uh, for them to have to tell us before we know, because mm -hmm. <laughs> because they should have been doing things that before now ordinarily yes. you don't need to ask. Um, maybe you should be asking what what can we also do to help you in what you're doing mm. or what else do you intend to do that we've not seen actually but, this, well, this is anything. a period where you're supposed to be very very vocal and very loud screaming at the top of your lungs there was a time I was asking just for fun I, mm. I asked a few a few people if they know who is heading the National Orientation Agency right now? And they didn't know. Do people know like, that there is a like National Orientation know, they don't, Agency? Some don't even know that that kind of an agency exists. And I'm sure they get budgetary allocation each year. So what happens to, like you said, responsibilities that are given to mm -hmm. you? Well, um, also, like you said, my people say the rats sleep without <laughs> locking their door because there are so many... <laughs> It's sweeter when I say it in my language, though. But, but because say it in your language. Because, huh? Say it in your language. <laughs> Please. Ebe gom. Yo can ambu fem. That is, because the rats are so many, they sleep without locking their door. Everyone will say, okay, you, you have to lock the door. Mm. Okay, I'm expecting the other person to lock the door. Nobody takes responsibility. Mm. So if we become the rats, the mm. Ebe gom that we are <laughs> calling, then the things that need to be done be will done. not be done yes. because we're waiting for the, the next person to do it. So 
in your small corner, you can contribute something. Take responsibility. Yes. Well, let's take a break and return. When we return, we'll be talking the, the bill, the um, education bank bill that yeah. has just been passed by the National Assembly. It has not been accepted to, but something has been done regarding that. What do you feel about it? Theophilos Akatuba will be joining us shortly. Stay with us. <laughs> 